Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Welcome to today's episode of How You're Getting Aft. I'm your host, Lewis Rossman. Today we're going to be going over yet another company that's created a piece of software that does not allow you to continue using it in spite of the fact that you paid for a perpetual license. We're going to talk about what a perpetual license actually means in 2025 and just this whole concept of what you bought and paid for not actually being yours in spite of that being what was advertised at the time. Before we get started with today's video, I would just like to give you a word from our sponsor, our friends over at Sponsor Block. Sponsor Block is a YouTube plugin for your web browser or a web browser plugin for YouTube. And it also exists as an open source piece of software that you could run on your phone if you're utilizing certain applications that implement this into their YouTube player. What Sponsor Block does is it gets rid of really annoying segments in YouTube videos that have advertisements in them that distract from the purpose of the video. So if you're watching a video that goes over weather changes in Malaysia or something, and then you have this thing where it's like a two minute advertisement for shitty headphones or a therapy service that's a scam or anything like that. This nonstop barrage of advertisements for things that nobody has actually vetted before advertising to you, whether it's shitty products, closed source software, whatever the hell it is, it's annoying and it's it's an aggravation. What this plugin does is it is a constant it's a constant stream of data and information from people that log every single one of these instances in the videos with timestamps and they're labeled properly so that when you're using it, it will automatically skip over those. Some Sometimes it doesn't automatically skip. If you disable that setting, you can just have hit click a button the moment it comes on and it will skip that for you. So you can choose whether or not to skip it. It's a very good time saving plugin. And I highly suggest you check out a plugin like that, as well as something called uBlock Origin. uBlock Origin is an ad blocker. It says that it's a, you know, again, it's a content blocker or a multi, it's not just an ad blocker, wide spectrum content blocker, whatever, you know, uh, ad blocker pretty much. Uh, it, it is an excellent ad blocker that allows you to not see annoying crap online. Back in 2001, when I was using Mozilla 1.0.1, I did this by myself. I would right click the advertisement, the banner ad, and then I would have to click on block images from this particular website or URL or domain. And now you don't have to do that because these plugins do it for you. Uh, this is a great little plugin that does it. And the reason I suggest you block origin is because it is open source. So it is constantly being audited by people to ensure that it doesn't have any bullshit in there. And more importantly, they don't have a system where they whitelist advertisements. There are other ad blocking plugins that have had a program where you can pay them. It was like a pay for play thing where they would block ads, but it would stop blocking your ads if you pay them, which is kind of disgusting in a lot of ways. It's, it's just, uh, again, the yeah, pretty much that. Uh, this is a great plugin for that. I genuinely believe in the concept of ad blocking because I believe that when it comes to data privacy and security and this whole thing where every company is trying to suck up your data all the time, there are the three horsemen of the data privacy apocalypse, advertising, insurance, machine learning, and AI. When it comes to advertisements, everybody wants to get their ad in front of the person that's most likely to buy the product, which is why there is all this demand for sucking up all your personal data every which way. The second is insurance, as we've seen with General Motors and others. They want to figure out what type of driver you are so that they can uh, insure you accordingly. And the problem with this is that many of these data collection uh, routines are bullshit. If somebody in front of you is a drunk driver and they do something stupid, even if you have a six car following distance, if you smash on the brakes so that you do not get into an accident with the drunk driver, you now have been dinged. And the last one is machine learning and AI where... Training it on public data is one thing. Trying to do that whole shit where we're going to train it on your private data within this cloud software is quite icky. Ad blocking is one of the ways that you can get back at this. It is one of the ways that you avoid this type of garbage. I did this uh, video on Chase Bank a while ago, and the thumbnail of this video gave you very clear instructions, which is block all ads. And I do believe when it comes to things like this and data privacy, we can do all the stuff in the world to try and fix that, but there's always going to be this incentive, and we need to hit at the root cause, which is the incentive behind all the data collection. Installing uBlock Origin on your web browser, as well as Sponsor Block, will likely save you a lot of time. It will save you bandwidth. It'll make you happier. Ads actually cause climate change. If you didn't know that, you'll actually be helping save the environment. Also, when you use AdBlock, you are helping to fight climate change as well, because ads waste energy. They waste uh, bandwidth. They waste computational power. And by not viewing them, you are literally saving the environment. You are saving the endangered species, the trees, everything. 
It's just a beautiful thing to do. Now, some of these studies are going over using Adblock Plus, but I highly suggest that you use uBlock Origin. It is, again, just a beautiful plugin. Do you remember that not only am I telling you to use an ad blocker, not only do you solve climate change, but the FBI tells you to use an ad blocker. The FBI recommends that individuals take the following precautions. Use an ad blocking extension when performing internet searches. Most internet browsers allow a user to add extensions, including extensions that block advertisements. That being said, let's get on to the topic of today's video. This is going to be a conversation about a program called Final Draft. This is a message that they send to uh, one of their customers who happens to be a viewer. Dear screenwriter, according to our records, you may be using Final Draft 10, a version of our software released in 2016 over eight years ago. Because of the advanced age of Final Draft 10, it may not work correctly on the most current operating systems and hardware configurations. In the years since the development of Final Draft 10, many advances have been made in computer hardware and operating systems, increasing their security and stability. As a result of security concerns for both our network and our customers, we will be discontinuing activation and deactivation of Final Draft 10 on June 30th, 2025. Please note this will not remove Final Draft 10 from your computers or affect your files in any way. You will no longer be able to install or activate Final Draft 10 on a new computer, but you will be able to continue to use it on your existing computer unless you update your computer or remove Final Draft 10. We will also be discontinuing email chat and chat technical support for Final Draft 10 on February 1st, 2025. You will still be able to access the manual and our knowledge base, but our support team will no longer provide support or troubleshoot for Final Draft 10. You want to ensure that our customers use the best version of Final Draft possible, uh, available I mean, and encourage you to upgrade to Final Draft 13 for the increased ability, security, and robust new screenwriting features, including a bunch of stuff that's totally irrelevant to you taking away my ability to use what I bought and fucking paid for. We understand that upgrading may be something other than what you anticipated. Wow. Okay, there. And as a token of appreciation for your loyalty, we are offering you a new version of the fucking software for $60. Wow. How Christian of you. That is mighty kind of you. Uh, so let, let, let's just get uh, go over this again. I'm going to read this over and just give you the part, points that are the most problematic for me. So the, the first thing is when you read the manipulation that's present here, our records say that you may be using the software that was released over eight years ago. So when they, why are you making a mention of when it was released? That is irrelevant to me. They're making that mention to kind of make it see that they're preparing you to feel ridiculous for using something that's old. Because of the advanced age... Again, like, we talk about advanced age when we're talking about a cat that has medical issues. Not that you're advanced age, little Clinty, you're a good boy. But when you're talking about a 16-year-old cat that has medical issues, you talk about advanced age. When you're talking about my grandmother that has Alzheimer's and some issues in her lower back before she passed away in her late 80s, that's when we talk about advanced age. That vocabulary is not usually used with software, and it's being used here, in my opinion, in a very, very manipulative way to try and make you feel silly for the fact that you're using something old, and also it makes it sound like they are, they're doing the kind thing by euthanizing your license to your software. In the years since the development of Final Draft 10, many advances have been made in computer hardware and operating systems, increasing their security and stability. So now you're trying to sell me on this, like, you know, it's, you, you're doing this because it's a good thing. As a result of, result of security concerns for both our network and our customers, we will be discontinue activation and deactivation of Final Draft 10. Uh, now, here's the, if you're talking about con security concerns on my end, don't worry about it, bro. I'll deal with my own security. I paid you for a perpetual license. I will keep my perpetual license. Clinton, be nice to the kitty that doesn't belong in my house. Clinty, no hissing. Be nice. No hissy fit. Be nice to the other kitty. It's going to be gone very soon. I know, that kitty doesn't belong. It's okay, kitty, that doesn't belong. If you go over there, Clinty won't hiss at you. You're a good boy. I'll play with you later. Allow me to worry about the security of my software. Don't worry about it, bro. I'm good. If I have any sort of issues, I could literally unplug that computer from the internet and use it as I please. Now, if the software will still work, then why is this a problem? It's a problem because I may have to reinstall my operating system. Let's say my hard drive dies. Let's say I have an issue and something gets corrupted. I reserve the right to reinstall my operating system on my computer. And when I do that, I'm then going to have to activate my software again. And if you have turned off the activation servers, that means I no longer have access to what I bought and paid for. If you have a security issue with your activation servers, and that's a you problem. And you can fix that problem by removing the DRM from my software once you decide to turn off the activation server. The moment that you decided to create a piece of software with a perpetual license that requires a, a, a network connection to your servers to be activated in order to work, you have now taken on the responsibility of maintaining that server from now until the end of time. That's a you problem. People will say, well, you can't expect them to maintain the server forever. Cool. Provide me a patch to the program that removes the DRM. If you want to call it a perpetual license and you want to get rid of the server, patch the software so I can still use it. 
That's a you problem, not a me problem. We will also be discontinuing email and chat technical support for this. That's totally fine. I do not expect support from now until the end of time for a piece of software I paid once, once for. That's completely reasonable, and I have no problem with that. We want to ensure that our customers use the best version of Final Draft available. I want to make sure all of my customers have the best MacBook available, so I will remotely disable the MacBook that I fixed for them and then offer them this MacBook in my window that's $3,000 for $29.99. It's like... Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. It's, it, it's, like, you see how they try to use that language to kind of make it sound like, we're actually helping you here. No, you're not. No, you're not. F out of here with that shit. Yet another company and a long list of many companies that I would prefer to not buy software from. If you take, and we do have an entry here on wiki.rossmangroup.com. The Consumer Action Task Force, otherwise known as the CAT Wiki, that goes over this issue. We're going to be revising this article. Anybody can join here and revise the article. If you want to add articles, you don't even have to log in. You can do them anonymously. You simply search for something. So you want to search for Microsoft Office 365. If they've done something that's made you aggravated, you click enter. And if it's not there, you go over here, you click it and you can make an article yourself. We do have guidelines for what it is that makes a good article. The idea behind this wiki is to create the best database of consumer protection that's humanly possible that goes over issues in the you will own nothing and be happy world. You own nothing and will be happy is not three people in a room doing this and yeah, seeking to bring on world communism or anything like that. Like I will read on some interesting websites. It's not like, it's not that. Well, but, but at the same time, uh, you will own nothing and be happy is an, is an important thing to, to reference because, yeah, while the idea that like five people in a room are doing this and trying to bring about some new world order communism and destroy, like, like, while that's kind of on the, eh, like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not fucking with that crowd. It is true that every single fucking company just so happened to realize that they can milk their users for more money if they turn everything into a subscription. They can milk their users for more money if they make their products unrepairable or just so happen to neglect the entire supply chain for making repair parts available. If they just so happen to stop offering schematics and diagrams for how to repair their devices and decide that they are just going to have a shitty little instruction manual that says, here's how you turn on the program. Ownership is being eroded. Do not, do not get this twist because I'll see criticisms in my comments saying, Lewis is crazy and he's into that whole you will own nothing and be happy thing or everything's a grand conspiracy. It's not a grand conspiracy. Every company just realize, like, it's not a conspiracy. It's just every company realize if we fuck over our users, we get more money. It's a story as old as time. And one of the ways that you push back against it is you identify it, you call it out every single time you fucking see it and you make sure to log it. And the goal behind this wiki is to create something so that right before you make a purchase, when you Google that software, you Google that, that service, that product, I hope we get to a point where the first result on Google will be this page where it says, this LG refrigerator that you are looking to purchase, by the way, Here's a citation for them trying to void your warranty. Here is them avoiding warranty when their compressors fail. And here's somebody saying that you're not allowed to class action sue them to try and get them covered under warranty because of a forced arbitration agreement that was written on the side of the fucking box that you never even got to see because they get the refrigerator out of the box before they deliver it to your house. But somehow when you sign saying you got the refrigerator, apparently that also means you signed an agreement that you didn't read. I would like for that to show up on Google with a high ranking. And I would like this website to be a website at some point that actually affects people's purchasing decisions. I know it's a tall order, but somebody's got to start doing it. And uh, hopefully you guys are open to helping. We've got some really cool people that have been helping so far. Uh, let's see, Keith has been infinitely helpful with putting together the entire concept strategically as to what the guidelines should be, what the mission should be, and how this would work. So shout out to Keith. Costas and Waldo have been fucking killing it with entries. Like, they just destroyed me. So if you look at the all-time ratings over here. Like Waldo, okay, firstly, Costas used to be at the top. Waldo, I don't know how, what you did, you freaking machine, how much coffee you've had, you've freaking killed it. Uh, ming has been killing it, Shingo has been killing it, I didn't even notice he was killing it, but these are the people that are really absolutely killing it. So they're, t they're making new articles, but they're also taking existing articles and making them as good as they can possibly be. So if you want to take a look over here, like when I talked about Netflix and 4K and how they were kind of advertising it in a what, in my opinion, is a very, very deceptive way. You had somebody who was anonymous. I, I think, yeah, I think it was an anonymous dude that created a stub article that really wasn't fleshed out uh, very well. It, kind of, it got the point across, but it just was missing a lot of stuff. You had this, and what happened is the community came together to turn that article 
into this with photos of the website going over these elements of it that are kind of manipulative, like the coloring up here on the 4K option, and then where they bury the shit to tell you that you're not gonna get it. They went over all the different DRM requirements. It went over the list of requirements that Netflix discloses and the ones that they don't disclose, and it has all these citations to go over everything. So this is one of those areas where everybody putting together just a little teeny tiny bit, just a little building block, allows us to get built into something amazing. You do not need an account. What we've decided is to have very, very heavy-handed moderation where you have people that are looking at this shit around the clock to make sure that it doesn't just wind up becoming a bunch of goatsy ASCII uh, rather than putting together a system where there's a high barrier to entry so that uh, I can be a lazy moderator and not really go through things the way I should. Anybody can contribute and we want this to become the best consumer protection resource since, uh, yeah, FTC ain't looking out for us, FCC ain't looking out for us. We got to look out for ourselves, and that requires working together. Thank you to everybody who's contributed. Costas, Waldo, Ming Ai, like all you, Keith, like you, God bless you all. You're doing, a, you're doing great work. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.